How's it going? My name is Ricardo Bucciarelli and my project is teaching how to execute the skill of striking a soccer ball with the instep of the foot using Bernstein's model of freezing degrees of freedom. So in Bernstein's model of freezing degrees of freedom, there are three stages and stage one involves teaching the execution of a skill by isolating and or freezing each of the different degrees of freedom. And in this case, the degrees of freedom represent different body parts or different muscles that uh, have to be frozen or trained in isolation in the beginning before they're able to be put together into a more complex skill. Stage two of Bernstein's model involves reorganizing and regrouping the degrees of freedom. So this would involve combining some different muscles and body parts, and this creates a bit of a more fluid movement. Stage three is the final stage of Bernstein's model, and in stage three, the learner will not only have a combined movement that combines all of the different degrees of freedom, but will also be able to take advantage of any uh, mechanical efficiency or other advantages that come out of a more fluid movement. So we're going to talk about the first stage in Bernstein's model of freezing degrees of freedom. And the first stage involves freezing all of the different degrees of freedom associated with the skill. So with striking a soccer ball with the instep of the foot, the first degree of freedom that we're going to freeze is the lower part of the leg, which involves the foot, the ankle, and the shin. What we're going to do is we're going to isolate the action of that part of the body the toe is going to be pointed down, the ankle is going to be locked, and the shin is going to be held very rigid, and we're going to strike the ball with that part of the foot against the wall. Okay, so the next degree of freedom that we're going to freeze has to do with the planting leg. So the planting leg must step forward with a hard step the approach should be done at about a 45 degree angle to the ball. The foot should be a little bit in front of the ball or score in line with the ball. And the toe of the planting leg should be pointing forwards. The strike with the lock, shin and ankle will happen only after this hard step with the planting leg. Okay, so the next degree of freedom that we're going to talk about with striking the ball is the hip and thigh of the kicking leg. So once the hard step on the plant leg happens, the hip and thigh of the kicking leg must rotate. So we don't want them to move directly straight, we want them to move in a round arcing movement and the rotation happens through the ball until the ball is kicked and then the kicking leg will actually cross over the planting leg as the athlete moves to the side. So uh, the final degree of freedom that we're going to talk about with striking a soccer ball with the instep is the trunk, upper body, uh, head, neck and arms. So that part of the body has to basically move as a unit and what you're trying to do with that part of the body is you're trying to keep it in a position that's going to maximize the range of motion in the hips and thus the power of the strike. So the upper body and trunk and head are going to all be held perpendicular to the floor in an upright position and both arms are going to be out to the sides and spread open. And that position is going to allow for the maximum range of motion in the hip of the kicking. Stage two of Bernstein's model of freezing degrees of freedom involves regrouping and reorganizing the degrees of freedom, which leads to a more fluid movement. It's not a finished athletic skill yet, but it's more fluid and more organized than the previous stage in which each degree of freedom was isolated. 
So the first thing we're going to try to do with the technique of striking a ball is we're going to try to combine the hard plant step, which is done at a 45 degree angle, with the foot in front of the ball and the toe pointing forward. Uh, we're going to combine that with the action of the lower leg, which is a straight shin, toe pointed down, and ankle lock. And already the strike is going to become a bit more powerful and controlled because of this combination. So the next combination of or, or regrouping of degrees of freedom that we're going to do in stage two is we're going to look at combining the movement of the hip of the kicking leg and the thigh of the kicking leg and combining that with the torso uh, which includes the trunk, the arms, head and neck. What will happen when these movements are combined is that more rotation will occur around the planting leg and the athlete will be able to produce more power while at the same time using less effort. And that's important because as the ball striking becomes longer and further away from the target, producing a lot of power without producing a lot of muscular effort becomes very important. When talking about reorganizing degrees of freedom and grouping and organizing the movement of the hip and thigh of the kicking leg and the trunk, torso, arms, neck and head, it's also important to consider what's happening as that rotation of the hip is, is occurring. So what you want to try to get the athlete to do is to maximize the instability around the planting leg. And that's done primarily by taking a big step with the planting leg but it's also done by maximizing the amount of rotation that happens around the planting leg. And if done correctly, it will almost look like the athlete is falling to the side and the athlete should also almost feel as if they're falling to the side as they rotate. So the third and final stage in Bernstein's model of freezing degrees of freedom involves releasing the freeze that occurred on all of the degrees of freedom, combining all of the degrees of freedom together to produce one smooth and fluid movement. And it also involves creating a significant mechanical advantage that allows the athlete to maximize the range of motion in the hip of the kicking leg, as well as to maximize the rotation that occurs around the planting leg. And these two factors together will allow the athlete to maximize the amount of power that they produce with the strike while minimizing the amount of muscular effort. So when teaching the execution of this technique and looking for different technical aspects to try to correct and zero in on, we also have the athlete stand with the ball on a natural line on the field, which is a straight line, and have them try to strike the ball using all of the teaching techniques that we mentioned before, but the, we want the ball to travel along the line, and that ensures that the ball is traveling straight and that the athlete is in control of the movement. Looking at it from the back, we'll see whether or not the ball is straight and travels on the line. And we'll also see whether or not the athlete is maximizing rotation based on the principles. Oh, good. Okay.